as you can see we're here in Alaska and uh, it's not it's a typical nice day in Alaska <laughs> overcast and a little bit of drizzle uh, because there's no wind or no Sun of course the mosquitoes are voracious today so all right fish clean again in a tote well you got just a little water over the fish put in most of a gallon of distilled water or uh, distilled vinegar this knocks the slime off makes it a world of difference your fish will come out looking like this where you don't have slime I mean there's basically no slime on it you can see the remnants of what was the slime and stuff like that but nothing like it was uh, if you don't use vinegar anyway I'll show you the process I'm using for filleting right now First thing is clean it up. Have a nice clean roof table. Get all the sand, uh, sea lice, whatever, whatever might be on. This is a knife I've been using. It's a Victorinox uh, edged blade. I, I like it. Uh, I've been also experimenting with these Dexter Ruzzles. Some of the things you want: a spoon, a way of sharpening it hose and probably outside something like a plywood or something you don't really care about getting getting nasty so I always take these off for a couple of reasons and this one clear up take the anus off as well I don't worry about these anymore but I will this time because I'm gonna do it to butterfly so take those off Yeah, keeping it clean helps. Uh, so you don't get the scales in your meat and everything else. So, two ways of doing it: you can cut in and cut over. Or, I seen a guy in Valdez doing this, and he was a professional. By all means, he needs to be the one making the YouTube video. So, anyway, if you take the head off, now you're able to see where that line is right there. So you can tell where you need to start your first cut and, and uh, how it should be aligned. So push down a little bit on there. So open the head's not in the way. Go right along that spine and your horizontal You'll have rib bones that are right inside of here, the ribs, then you'll have these horizontal bones, then you'll have the spine sticking up. So you want to cut through those, but not through these. So go in, kind of, and that, that's another reason why I do this. Now I've got a, a guideline on where the center is. So go right along, and you can see how far that knife is, so you can tell that that knife is in going I was to guess I'd say that little line right there is where the horizontal bones are. So you want to cut through those. You can hear them like a zipper, actually. And uh, go down, and then once you get right in here, you can rotate your knife so that you can bring it. It'll come out like that. And you just bring it right down along that and cut it out. And uh, like I say, the less sawing, the the better looking fillet right there's not a lot of hack marks on that fillet so you can bring it just right along them ribs this one i'm going to do a butterfly just to show you how to do that so normally i would cut it right there but this one i'm going to leave intact one of the things i've been doing is why I got the open is taken and uh, scavenging that last scavenging that last amount of meat there. You get about a tablespoon per side, which is, you know, substantial. This is this is what I've gathered from uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine, eight or nine of fish. So yeah, it's worth it's worth doing. It's a couple cans of of, uh, of salmon. So 
side too is kind of the same. So if you're cutting in from the tail, you go in and you kind of stay in. Now you see where you cut the adipose off and uh, you can see where your line is there. So same thing, leave a, about a quarter inch. Oops, not able to get in there. Cut, kind of press it down with your hand, flatten them guts out so you can tell where you're at. Then you can hear the clicking of those horizontal bones. Same thing, push that in, push it out, turn it up, and uh, take it off of them ribs. So there's a fillet. If you want, you, from there you would clean it up. You'd, uh, you know, take and clean it up real nicely. Put some what you might call it in there. Pack it up and cook it as a whole fish if you like, or whatever. I I don't save many butterfly fillets like that, but I thought I would go through the process of doing it. Should have a fairly translucent eh, that's not a good example there's some meat i left on there but pretty translucent uh, as far as the eggs we've got 19 fish i'm not saving all the eggs i will save some of them for two things i was going to make caviar with some and then also cure some for uh, for fishing later up in between fish. Okay, this one I won't butterfly, so it should go a little quicker and easier. Thin. Thin. Thin and butt tucks. Head off. Push down, line up on that bone right there, cut through the horizontal bone. I'm clicking. You can see where you're at on that for a guideline. Go right on down, rotate through, out, out. Oops. This is what happens in a hack a lot. You get meat like that, and it's not, I don't know, it's not a waste, but it, it don't look as awesome on a fillet. This one I kind of blew it with the rib bones there. That's all right, I'll clean these fillets up before we go to freeze them. I don't know if I prefer cleaning them with the heads on or the heads off. Uh, I, I do them both ways. Sometimes it just seems easier to, to do it with the heads on. Beautiful play. Just gorgeous stuff. Love these reds. Kenai River reds.
All right, pretty translucent. Feel good about that one. Just swallowed a mosquito. Awesome. <clears throat> it's going to ruin my diet. Here's one with the head on. Mosquitoes are awful today. That was not the most awesome fillet, but I'll take it. Not much left. Got some head. Clean and scale free is awesome. While the skin's on, take that strip off there for the smoker. Take the skin off. Keeping the meat separate from the skin and scales. You don't want to reintroduce all that crap. And cut that tail piece off, the skinless, boneless tail piece. Best piece to fry. And that piece gets wrapped up with seasonings in tin foil. We'll rinse it again, make sure it's got no scales and it's clean. Put it in tin foil, put the seasonings on it, <clears throat> wrap it up and freeze it. Then all you got to do is take that little tin foil packet out of the freezer, throw it on your barbecuer for 15 minutes or in your oven for a few minutes, and it's done. It's fast food, and it's wonderful.
I need more totes. Maybe a little piece like that, it has some ribs in it, you'll want to take them off just to prevent having a mouthful of the nasty later. Same way with those last of those ribs or uh, bones right there. You can kind of see them poking through. <clears throat> Skip off the bottom for the smoker. Now you gotta decide what you want. Do you want canned meat? Do you want fillets? Do you want barbecue packets already made up? Do you want smoked fish? That's where the fun begins. All right, what you can do is if you want a lot of smoked, you can take a fillet and a, if it's a thicker fillet, you can actually cut some of that down. <clears throat> a lot of people don't like the meat, or I, I don't know about a lot of people. I don't like the meat really thick because it's hard to get it smoked just right. I like it to be a little thinner, so I'll cut it down. Actually, just take, and take a layer. Like that. Put that in the box for, this, for the canned fish, and then cut that into strips for smoking. That's uh, that's another tip. That way you got these nice nice thin pieces that smoke uh, quickly and uniformly. I like my cut in strips like that. A lot of people just want big chunks, uh, just what you prefer. I've just had better luck with the strips because they uh, they they seem to smoke quicker and easier. Anyway, that's uh, that's that. Because you definitely want to get some good canned fish out of there. So if you're looking at if you're looking at a you know having a case of canned salmon, you'll want to basically more than fill that up. want to miss out on a chance to get all you can for the for the canned taking off a layer like that go to the canner strip the rest of this up and you're good that makes great smoked Another where, place where that hole saw helps to hold that when you're stripping it. And a sharp knife. I'm getting down to the final part of the fish cleaning. Just thought I'd show the, when you get down to these fillets, what you want to do. Get all the everything off there that don't look like you would uh, want to eat it. And sit right here where the anus was, and there's some little skin bones. You, you'll want to take your knife and just get right underneath there and just kind of get that out of there. And you could throw that in the canner, I suppose, but I mean it's such a small thing that it's not it's not much. Then uh, <clears throat> we're wanting a lot of canned, so. What I'll do is, again, take that thin strip off of there, because there's not much meat on it, so it's awesome smoke, because 
whatever to get the fats out of the skin and whatnot. And uh, same thing with this little tail piece that has no bones. That's awesome smoked. Then just kind of take and get the meat off of that for canning. Same thing for there for canning. And uh, you can like little pieces of fat and stuff like that. That's actually really good for you. I don't know if you, some people want to take it off. I leave it. Anyway, that's it. So this is what we ended up with. These are going to be wrapped in foil with seasonings and butter and uh, whatever you would normally want in them. I don't put lemon in there because it may react with the tin foil, but I think onions would be fine. But we usually put <clears throat> salt and pepper. Uh, we've tried chili powder. It's been really good. Uh, Italian dressing is really good. Um, sesame oil, toasted sesame oil, if you like that flavor, is really good. Anyway, those will get wrapped up, frozen, so you can just pull them out, throw them in the oven, and be done in 10 minutes. Fast food. These are the tails. These will just get put in, uh, cleaned up more, but put in uh, vacuum bagged of about four of them in each pack. And uh, then to just be taken out to fry in a frying pan because there's no bones, beautiful, good stuff, good stuff. This is uh, what we got going for the smoker. I may add a little more to that. This is what we got going for the canner. And uh, those are fillets that we'll vacuum pack with the skin on for throwing on the barbecue. Anyway, that's what we ended up with in a bucket and a half of debris. All right.